something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Restorations. Today, as promised, part three of the Launch X431 Pro 3S Plus. This is a great tool and deserves to have more videos done on it. And I intend to keep that kind of promise because, man, it just it's just a good tool. I'm shocked for the price, what I'm getting out of this thing. Let's go into Diagnose. We've got ourselves a fine automobile. That would be a Volvo. Volvos have lots of problems all the time. So it's perfect for, <laughs> it's perfect for showing off how cool this tool can be. All right, we're gonna search and let's see. It might show up. Volvos are notorious for being finicky about reading bins, but we'll see what it can do. All right, so it did actually find it, 2001 XC70. And we could do a health report. So let's just see, it's gonna go through and read all the systems and this car is not healthy. So <laughs> it should show a lot of good stuff. Let's see what it comes up with. You see also it rolls through the systems pretty darn quick. Um, and that I was shocked. Like I'm coming from an OTC Genesis uh, and that thing was tick tock. You know, it was just moving so slowly that uh, it would take maybe two to three minutes to read codes where this one, well, we've already gone through four of them. The CEM's got all kinds of problems. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. And uh, we're already at 33%, maybe 15, 20 seconds in. So it's a pretty quick moving device, no doubt. Climate control modules showing a fault. And I'll go into these subsystems with you and show you the kinds of things that you can do to make them better. All right, it's almost done now. There we go. So we have SRS, rear center seatbelt tensioner, resistance too high. So we got two SRS codes. We have a lot of CEM codes here. Communication with the audio modules missing, door lock too high, a com with the ECM is not good, Ooh, internal faults, that's not good. Climate control, passenger compartment, temperature sensor, faulty signal, and then we have TCM, ECM, all that stuff. Uh, shocking that, uh, <laughs> that everything else looks good, to be honest with you. Right, so if I want to get into stuff, I could hit enter here, and it's going to go to that particular computer, right? Now I have module information. Well, let's read those codes again. Right, there we are. And now, this is so cool about this. So every, uh, well, I won't say every, but most of these newer scan tools are going to have like a built-in health report. Like, they're going to have their own database. What these guys have done, and this is really cool, is they just take the code and go on out on the internet. And here you are. So circuit resistance, it's going to tell you, right? And it has a variety of things. And you saw how fast that loads, right? Let's go to Volvo Forms. Right? And now I'm on Wi-Fi out here, but like no no problem, right? Why are these things happening? Oh, let's go through. We could read it. We could do this. We could do that. Now back out of that. But like, is that not incredible? Right. So we can go back and we could do that. I'm not going to do it with both. And then help, help is telling us like the the stuff that we used to get. The thing like the basic diag thing. Like, hey, check this. Check that. And of course, this is kind of like what all data is going to give you. I also have Identifix loaded on this, so I can go to Identifix's website, punch this stuff in, and really get some great help. All right, and it'll give us the whole thing if we press the down button on those. Nice big lettering, too. Good for old timers like myself. Very cool. All right, so I could read the data stream at this point. And it does have it, right? I could take a look. All it's going to give me is nothing on this, unfortunately, because that's not a... But left-hand drive, it's a V70. And so it's just showing those that there's not a whole lot. When it, when it comes to airbag, you either have yes or no. And so in this case, but wait till we get into some other stuff here. I'll definitely be able to show you some of the, um, some of the issues. So now on this one, I can read the freeze frame for it as well. That's true for just about all the systems. Freeze frame is just going to tell us, hey, I did not see what I needed to see. But it's going to give us like all the engine components, everything. Yeah. Counters, how many times it was bad, right? So 
it's there, but in this case, with airbags, I probably picked the wrong one here to start with, but with airbags, you know, it either is or it isn't. Now I have fixed this problem, so I am going to clear the code and the key is on, which with an airbag means that it would directly reset if it does its self-test after clearing the code. So we'll read the codes again and see what happens, right? Wait for half a minute and check DTCs again. So that's pretty cool. All right, I'll go ahead and read it again, and this time it should stay off. No DTC set, right? Awesome. All right, well, I can back out of that. We've we've fixed our problem with our uh, SRS system. And now let's go. We have these, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff here, right? We can once again dig in deep. Now these, you'll notice, are not uh, ECM codes. This is going into these subsystems that pro-level tools need to do. So we're going to read off those codes again, and we'll see what the Internet has to say about a few of them. All right, communication with audio. Well, I know why that is. I don't have a stock audio system in this, so that's not a surprise. I know what that problem is, right? But left rear door signal unlocked, that's not good. Too high, okay? So we could search for codes on that. And I mean, this is snappy, right? Signal too high. Swede Speed is the name of that website. It has all kinds of diag. Reset it and forget it. Look at the condition of your battery. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, I mean, peace of mind from your driver's seat. I haven't got a wrench out yet. If you're doing this stuff for a living, this is the way to go, right? All right. Calm with the engine. That's not good. But all these I happen to know from working on Volvos for my whole life. These codes here are communication codes. It's a Volvo. That's what they're going to do. It's terrible, but, I mean, they're just not very good vehicles. Right, so I can read the data stream on this, and I have a whole bunch of stuff. ECM star signal, relays. Oh, the sun came out. I hope you all can still see that. Fog light relay. You know, let's go ahead. And hazard switch input. Um, fuel pump's not going to be on. I'm trying to th think of things here that we can turn on. Uh, lock state of driver's door. Let's do that. Uh, let's see. The left. Where's front here? Status left rear doors, right? Status driver's door, fluid level sensor. Okay, so we've got a bunch here that we're looking at. Fog light relay, not active. Activated, right? So there you go, you can check. So this diag for this is just incredible, right? I push the button and if it says not activated, well, I know that the switch is no good or the relay is not clicking on. Perfect, right? Same thing with hazard. If I turn my hazards on and they don't come on, well, I've just diagnosed it, right? Driver's door. Do I lock and unlock? And now it's locked. Driver's door status is closed. So here you go. This is this is what this is what we do. This is how we work. All right. Let me get out of this. I'm going to go ahead and, and we're going to clear all these fault codes. But there's other stuff in here I want to show you, and this is actually really cool. Special functions. Hmm. Programmed values, let's see here. We can program this, right? We can seat temperature, daytime running lamps. Do we want those on and off, right? So this comes with stuff that the snap-on scan tool does not do. I can set the temperature. When I back up, do I want my rear wiper to come on? Do I want my daytime running lamps on? It's going to communicate with it. And I can change those values. I could tell it no, right? I could have it operated off the switch. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. This is the way I want it set up. But interior light with the key. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And this is just in this one thing, okay? Then we have actuation tests. I can make the window go down. So you know what? Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do the front one, though. Uh, windshield washer relay, man, let's see, horn activation, what other ones we got? All right, let's go with windows. Rear left door window down, let's go with that one. Now, it's saying start and stop, right? Activation test finished. Right now I can roll my window back up. It's gone out of diagnostic mode. 
Is that not cool? Is that not cool? So there are so many things that I can check from my seat here. So many things that I can check from my table. And I mean, without ever having to get out a test light, without ever getting out a multimeter, without ever getting out my wrenches or my sockets or whatever. And that's just this one small thing. So we've now gotten the lights reset on the CEM, which is just goofy, I guess, right? We have a power seat module, climate control. Let's go, uh, let's go into some of these other ones. Um, yeah, let's get out. I'll go out of this altogether and we'll select engine control module. Because I want to show you some of the graphing stuff that this does before we wrap it up. Okay. But we do have special functions in here as well. Do I want to check my readiness codes? All right. If I'm getting ready to go pass a test, yeah, we're good. Okay. So I can do that before taking it in. If I want to actuate, I can turn on my injectors. I can turn my cooling fan on. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the fan running at full tilt. So there you go. And that's just, you know, I, I don't want to activate a bunch of this stuff, but I think you guys get that. I can turn my throttle on. I can turn my fuel relay on, which makes my pump run. Cooling fan, AC relay, I can hear it clicking on and off. I can test injectors. So this is, this is really in-depth stuff here, okay? And then... Um, read the data stream that's where we're going to go next and so i want to have let's take a look at the pedal sensor let's take a look at what the electronic throttle says it is let's take a look at our um, outside temperature our battery voltage our brake light switch hmm, let's see i want to find something that's injection time is good long-term fuel trim let's go with short term on that yeah oxygen sensor front bank one and throttle angle that's a lot, right? That's a lot. One thing you learn with these things is that, you know, if the more stuff you add, the slower the reaction time is going to be. But our reaction time is actually really good on this still. You can see our pedal jump up and down. There's our voltage. Brake light switch. Oxygen sensor is sitting there dead. Throttle angle, if I give it a little bit of gas, it's going to jump up. Hopefully. <laughs> or I've got a problem with it. Hmm, I don't know. That doesn't seem to be reading properly. Oh, I know. The car's not running, so the actual throttle's not changing. So let's start the car up. All right. Now we got it. So here's our battery voltage is now changing. We're getting into the high, higher voltage. Should be 13.5, maybe 14.5. Yeah, somewhere in that vicinity. If I hit the brakes, that's going to switch. My injection duration... Oxygen sensor should start coming to life here eventually. Throttle angle, you can now see that that's changing, right? Cool. Well, let's go to a graph on that. All right, if I want to see, if I want to see this thing, you know, jumping up and down, and, and if I want to look at an O2 sensor, want to see what was going on while I'm driving, I totally can do that. Okay. And we have degrees. We can also switch some of these around, but let's go ahead. And, well, I guess that's basically the same thing. Battery voltage, if I wanted to see if it doesn't do well under a load. Right, I could turn the AC on. Doesn't seem to have any dip at all, so that's doing fine. Cool. So I think you guys are getting the picture here. It's incredible all the stuff it does. We'll get out of the special functions. Uh, I don't know what else I can show you. I guess, um, I mean, we pretty much have covered all of it as far as like the different, I mean, just look at all the different modules. This isn't a diesel, but ECM, TCM, ABS, ETM, SAS, that would be for a diesel, CEM, DIM, phone module if it's equipped, audio module, climate control, SRS, UEM, which is not working properly on my car, steering wheel module, which controls all, all that stuff. Power seat module, driver's door module. I mean, you name it. If it even came with the uh, really fancy model there that had the RTI stuff in it. Uh, just so much, the REM. So this is uh, one of these cars that a lot of people don't like working on Volvos because they can't get into a lot of these systems. 
I have a Snap-on Zeus. This product outperforms the Zeus in nearly every way I can think of, and and that blows me away. I don't even I don't understand how that's possible, but it, it does. It's just better at it's just better. It's crazy. ADOS calibration, right? We're in there, and it's like, oh, wait a minute now. Commonly used special functions. Do we do a battery reset? Do we do a throttle reset? Steering angle, oil light, right? Well, guess what? Um, well, my check engine light's not right now, but uh, I think the car's been running too much. Let's see. Yeah, check it out. My service light's on, right? So let's go ahead and reset it. Volvos can be a giant pain when it comes to resetting service lights, much like all cars, but you know, if you work on every make and model, it gets hard to remember all the different all the different little tricks to get in here and do it, but there it is. It's done. All right, why well, cycle that key again? That's going to be gone. There it goes. <laughs> so pretty awesome. Just pretty darn awesome. And, I mean... It's so fast. It's just the way that it, the way that it goes. No, I can I could change my electric seat position here. That's actually a big deal, man. Right? So reprogramming the seat because the key is linked to the seat. So if my wife had a key and I had a key, the seats should automatically move to each one of our favorite positions. Here's how to program it. Right? Awesome. Right, so there it is. If there's anything else y'all want me to show or do other diag with it when I finally get, you know, other problems. Uh, some customers just don't want their cars filmed when they're being worked on, which I, I respect that. But I'd be happy to do it. This is the Launch X-431 Pro 3S Plus, and I'll tell you, there's a big difference between some of these 431s. This one here is the larger screen. It is Lenovo. It is way faster than the, uh, the original and it's going to be supported for a whole lot longer as a result. That'll do it for today, my friends. Take care.